Hey guys, how are y'all doing today? It is the end of April and it's time for the conclusion video for the month of April. This month, as you guys know, has been Battle of Books, Zombies versus Unicorns. We're gonna finally decide who wins out on top for now. Uh, we're gonna do a vampires versus werewolf style like my last video. You can check it out. I'll put a link in the doobly-doo in my pants. We're gonna have Team Zombie, Team Unicorn. I am going to fight it out between myself, who wins out on top. So I divided the month of April into two rounds. The first round, we had The Enemy by Charlie Hickson versus Rampant by Diana Peter Friend. Team Zombie versus Team Unicorn. They were pretty much even with each other. I gave both of them a readable rating. I like both of them a lot. Let's get started. Fight Grown-ups are the only ones infected in the book. Killer Unicorns. Killer Unicorns. Huh. Think of the gore and violence. Kids wield common objects as weapons like lead pipes and knives. Some of them take on the size of elephants. Elephants are huge! Mutated monkeys! Seriously scary. They have red eyes and fangs. They freak me out. Gross. Covered in boiled and pus. Craving the flesh of the young. Oh yeah. Yeah, right. They're violent, ferocious beasts. I mean, they will stab and gore you. They will basically open your gut with their horn and stomp on your entrails. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. They're kids. Short legs. They can't run very far. They cannot escape the hordes of the infected running to eat them. Technically, there's no zombies in your book. They're the almost dead. Huh. I'm going to have to go with Team Unicorn technicality, but I think Killer Unicorns definitely had an advantage in this. I mean, they were brutal in this book. They frightened me. So for the last two weeks of April, I pitted Hold Me Closer Necromancer by Lish McBride, Team Zombie, of course, versus Hunt of the Unicorn by C.C. Humphreys. We're gonna have kind of a rebuttal in this round. Both of you kind of attack one another why one is weaker than the other. Let's just go through the motions. Fight-o! Unicorn is named Moonspill. Moonspill. It's a book about necromancy, not zombies. This is a war between zombies and unicorns. Mm -hmm. There's another named the Heartsease. Heartsease. The only zombies in that book is a panda and a guy named David Davidson. Doesn't really instill the fear in my heart. Unicorns can't even come into our world and breathe their air. They say it's polluted or something. How weak is that? I mean, they don't even know their own legends. They basically conform to whatever we say they are. You've already said it was unreadable. Really? Yeah, sorry. We're pretty much tied one to one, each team having a point. It's time for the lightning round. Zombies versus unicorn. Fight though! Well, they keep the justice. Eh. Zombies aren't stupid. They can feel love? Love? Eh? They break the rules and they like chocolate milk. Chocolate milk. There are running zombies. Running zombies. Now that's more like it. I mean, they get all the girls. Talk about play as creepy. Baby zombies. Very creepy. Killer unicorns. Hmm. Stories all about evolution escaping the inevitable. Hope in a zombie story? No way. Princess Pretty Pants. That's the most awesome name ever. Unity between the dead and the living? Coexistence? They're life hungry unicorns. They take the lives of babies. Really? Interesting. Kids ending their parents. How's that for hope? Didn't they also throw a prom? The winner is. Unicorns! Really? 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 For me, I've always thought unicorns were just cute and fluffy and nothing but take up nice wall space on tapestries. But reading some of these stories from the anthology and reading Diana Peters' friend's rampant gave me a whole new outlook on the way I see unicorns. Unicorns 
should not be underestimated for one thing. They are killer bees. They're capable of doing real damage. They can be portrayed in a good light, in a dark light, in a fantastical magical light, in a killer light. That's what surprised me the most is the diversity of the different kinds of unicorns. Justine was correct in how zombies is a metaphor for the human condition. They represent conformity, consumerism, and inevitable death. I still have the love for zombies, don't get me wrong, they are creepy and they pretty much represent hopelessness and that just freaks the hell out of me. And I think unicorns represent people also. They can both represent good and evil, you know, and hope. Hope, as cheesy as that sounds. What comes down to it is as people, as readers who are reading these stories, we in the end root for the protagonist. We root for the good that will happen in the end. Maybe the appeal isn't the zombies, but the hope that the few surviving can outlast and survive the tragic inevitable. Maybe in the end, we have more unicorn than zombie in us. You just wrinkled my brain. I know. Really. I still love the zombies. I'm one of them kind of half the time watching TV and eating. Yeah, but I really want a unicorn now. I just want one. That's everything guys. I will talk to you later. You know, the kids, they have short legs. They can't run very hard. <laughs> I mean, they're players. 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 <laughs> Think. <laughs> What, what?